Yeah. New 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 Long okay. story. It'll make sense later. Yeah. Okay, we have it coming soon. I stick to the engineering. Okay, so uh, the new Create 3 from iRobot. It's not quite out yet, but we do have a sign up. Uh, we're out of the Create 2. Um, the Create 3, it looks like a nice upgrade. It's got Wi Fi, I think it's got Bluetooth, it's got uh, Python USB port. powered. Python. Um, this looks like a really cool robot. Maybe we'll get Circuit Python Planka. We working will. On it. That'd be pretty sweet. J just for the folks, so one of the cool things about iRobot is they're like, oh, we solved the biggest prop problem with robotics is like you need to make power supply, you need to make this, you need to make that. We happen to make it. So it just comes without the vacuum parts basically, but it's a learning robot. Um, but that's that's it's the, a great that's platform. the genesis of this. Yeah. And it's a really good deal. You yeah. get the battery, you get the motors, you get the sensors, you get like the computer. I mean like you can build it for less. Yeah. So coming soon. Sign up. All right. I don't know what I don't know what this is. What is this? I think this is built from the blueprint of a Roomba robot vacuum. Meet the Create Three educational robot iRobot's new mobile robot development platform for learning ROS2. A canvas for your creativity, the Create 3 arrives pre-assembled and ready to go with a suite of smart technology. Program the Create 3 to perform simple behaviors, sounds, and movements to grasp the fundamentals of robotics, computer science, and engineering. Or tap into advanced applications including autonomous localization, navigation, and telepresence. The Create 3 lets you mount and power payloads, connect and run third-party hardware, use its cargo bay for storage, and dock the robot on its home-based charging station. As a connected robot, you can talk to the Create 3 in multiple ways and choose between running ROS2, the iRobot coding app, or iRobot Education's Python web playground. Looking for ways to get started? Explore the iRobot Education Learning Library for basic tutorials and sample projects. Or check out the 3D simulation of the Create 3 using Ignition Gazebo or the iRobot coding app for increased access to robotics education and research. What will you create? Okay, watch this. Watch this. This is um, the uh, Bangle.js2, and this is really cool. When I saw this watch, I'm like, this is sweet. I'm going to uh, show it on the overhead, actually, because it's, of course, you want to see the watch. Um, so it's got um, the, well, the sharp memory display. So here's something interesting. So you see how this display is still on, but it's like really dark. Um, so this is a display that, I, I mean, I can see it, but you can't because it's like the polarization of the screen. It's a little tough to see, but like you can, you can still read the, right? Yeah. You can read that. Um, it's an always on screen, but it's not Yink. It's got like, it's a little bit like the Pebble 2 or 3, I think, had a screen like this. And when you press the button, it does turn on the backlight. It's, um, I think, like a 9-bit color screen or something. And um, this is running Esperino. So, hold on. I have to remember how to make it do stuff. Okay. So there's a capacitive touch screen, and there's all these programs that you can... Um, this is, I think, actually running Esperino, so you can reprogram it over BLE, and it's got like, um, like temperature reading data, and like, you can just have uh, data scroll through. Looks like there's actually a bug in the app. Oh well, I probably shouldn't have done something I didn't know. Oh wait, there you go. Um, so you can write custom apps for this in JavaScript using Esperino, which is um, super cool. They had a watch before that was a little chunkier. And this one is an off the shelf watch. I think it's called like the QA3 or something. Uh, there's a heart rate sensor, there's a temperature sensor, I think barometric pressure and, and all that. Um, so you can do um, like heart rates and uh, um, blood oxygen. But what's really interesting is there's a little magnetic cable that of course I have it plugged into my computer. I didn't bring it with me. Um, that plugs onto here, and this actually is power ground, so you can charge the watch up, of course. But then the two middle pins are SWD clock and data. So you can actually reprogram this as an NRF52 840 um, BLE microcontroller. You could install Arduino on it. You can install CircuitPython on it. You could code it directly with uh, the Nordic um, NRF API. I think this is really neat. Um, you know, Esperino, of course, is, is a very easy way to... Um, we program it. I don't know how to get out of this app. I just got this 
I just got this thing. Why am I making it? Maybe it doesn't quit. But um, you got the button, capacitive touch screen. I think it's like 200 by 200 pixels. Um, program it using the Esprino Bluetooth app. Um, maybe we'll do a little video where we show how to do that because this is kind of yep. interesting. And um, you know, the processor inside is the uh, Cortex M4 NR52840 with one megabyte of uh, flash, 256K of RAM, and it's also got an additional eight megabytes of SPI, floor, uh, SPI flash memory storage as well. So all the sensors and a great reverse engineering of this off the shelf um, watch by Esperino. So um, check out on Hackaday IO, I, um, they actually have a document with all of the settings. So if you're interested in learning about the internals, uh, you can do that there. There's also a Kickstarter that completed its funding. And so we've got this in stock now. Yeah. Next up, revision. Revision, the Venmo 7700, one of the last sensors we made before we started turning everything into STEM QT. Um, this is now STEM uh, So it's great for plug and play usage. Uh, we have a right angle version and this is the flat version. So you can see the sensor is pointing straight up. Um, it's the same PCB for both versions, just one has the chip like rotated. Uh, and this just shows, it gives you Lux output. It's a really easy to use sensor. Um, it's really reliable. And um, we've got CircuitPython and Arduino code for it. Okay. Um, we have more of the Deluxe D-Light LEDs. Uh, this is by our friend Mark, who we've worked with for, and been friends with for uh, over a decade. And we have more types available. So that was the blue round one. You can see. You get the, yeah, the blue, the, the round ones are like this kind of um, crystalline globes. They come five in a pack and we have green ones. Green ones, also spherical. And as Philby said, this is not a drill. Skulls. This is real. Skull shaped LEDs. White skulls that you could also paint if you wanted, if you wanted to have them. I can't color. think of another company besides Adafruit, that you would expect to have skull LEDs. These are beautiful. Um, I don't know what folks are gonna do with these, and that's what the cool part about but it it's is. Gonna it, it's gonna be It's gonna be neat, it's gonna be interesting. There's gonna be like cool macro photography with them. Um, they are fantastic. I love them. Goth. Good work, Mark. Skull. And we'll have uh, Mark on one of our shows in some way, shape, or form, and we're also gonna do a whole bunch of other additional photos. These are nice too. We also showed the uh, crystal one. It's a crystal shape uh, last week and we have uh, more permutations on the way. Uh, Mark is deciding uh, if there's enough demand, all sorts of different ideas and designs. I think there was a request for dragon shaped ones. Maybe that'll happen, who knows? But if folks pick them up and if you use the code, we could tell Mark, hey, these are selling like, not hotcakes, they're selling like deluxe delight LEDs. Which, like skull cakes. Like skull cakes. Um, all right, and start the show besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our city, our customers, our staff, our community is? The VL53L4CX. So this is another time of flight sensor from ST. And you're probably like, aren't there like eight of these by now? And the answer is yes, there's about eight of them. Uh, and they all look very similar. But this one is actually kind of neat in that it is a um, very long distance one. So far, the, previously, the longest distance it could do was four meters. The VL53L4CX uh, can do six meter distance and it can do multi-target. So that means it can actually detect if there's two objects at different distances within its um, range of vision, which I think is about 18 degrees. Um, right now there's only an Arduino library and I will mention the Arduino library is really like chunky. So it can't run in an Uno. You really do need like a, a Cortex M0 or M4 or ESP32. Um, but they do have a library written for this uh, sensor. I just got it working yesterday, pretty much. And, um, you know, it's got an amazing range of 10 millimeters to 6,000 millimeters. It can actually go a little bit under 10 millimeters, but it's no longer linear. Um, the multi-target is cool, too. Uh, we were chatting with Liz, and we said this would be a great sensor for making, like, a laser harp. Um, but it can also be used for uh, robotics um, if you want to do, like, distance sensing. But, um, again, it's, you know, six meters away is, is, is really far away. I can also do, I think, um, if you want to make a digital um, uh, measurement device, what's it called? Like a like a tape measure, yeah. like a laser tape a measure. A distance sensor? A distance sensor, but like not, usually distance sensors don't, aren't that precise. This one yeah. is precise to a couple millimeters. Okay. So um, check it out. It's the same uh, format as 
or other VL53 sensors, um, but again, we don't have CircuitPython or Python code. As of yet, uh, we're going to start writing that library hopefully soon. That's new products.